All right, guys. Uh, we're still waiting on coach, but Levi is here, ready to go. You're unmuted. Cool. <clears throat> so, Davis, go ahead and start us off. Levi, how are you, man? I'm good. Had a great day of practice, and it was really sunny today, so that was nice. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good day. Yeah, it certainly beats the alternative. Um, yeah. But for you, th this quarterback competition, um, how do you feel like you've done this spring, how you performed, and where do you feel like maybe you are going into the, the spring game on Saturday? I feel good. I feel really good. You know, um, new OC, new system, kind of, um, you know, new mentality. And uh, it's been exciting, and I feel like I've – made some really good strides and I'm excited to uh, perform in the spring game and then take the next step and work over summer and get ready for uh, fall camp so Levi we just found out that you know not too long ago that you were really pretty banged up there last year mm -hmm. how bad was it before that Boise State game um my shoulder was was really bad um it was I mean it was out of place uh from Hawaii on and then it just got progressively worse. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I played through it, and uh, I really don't re regret the decision playing through it. Uh, so, yeah, I'll leave that at that. Levi, Levi did, has there been any residual to that problem, or are you feel fully fine now without any type of surgery or anything? No, I'm fully fine. No surgery was needed, which was awesome. You know, praise God. Um, you know, a few bad habits picked up, you know, during that time, you know, with the shoulder. So uh, breaking those uh, this spring and working on this summer to get, you know, everything fine tuned is going to be a big emphasis. Uh, so. Levi, to, to you, does this feel like a, a, an open quarterback battle? Do, do you feel like you're getting a fair shot at this thing? Yeah, I do. I really do. Um, uh, I feel like Coach P is a really honest guy, and he's going to play the best guy. He's going to play the hot hand, and, you know, he talks about it all the time, getting hot. So, um, you know, I got to do everything in my power. You know, I can't control everything else, so I'm going to do everything in my power to be the best quarterback for this team to help us win a Mountain West championship. What's it like to have a, you know, a battle safe with someone like you're having right now and, and the relationship you guys can have away from this from the field, how, I mean, how do you work on that, and, and how good is it? It's awesome, you know. You get to um, compete against you know, like one of your good friends, so it's awesome to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, just going out there, having fun, you know, smiles, getting the guys getting going, you know, because you know we're kind of the pace car for everyone else. So, Levi, what did you learn most about yourself last year? Um, you know, I feel like. Uh, Last year, I learned that I need to control what I can control. You know, I can't do everyone's job, and I can't try to fix things um, that someone else messed up or anything like that. So just controlling what I can control, um, having fun, and uh, taking profits is a big thing that our new OCs talked about, uh, Coach P, just taking a profit, you know, not having these bad negative plays, just taking a profit. So. Yeah, yeah, Levi, how, how has this this new offense been going in terms of, of learning it? Has, has it been pretty seamless? And, and what sorts of things do you like about it? Seamless? Uh, no, I mean, uh, it's it's definitely similar, um, but different. And, you know, there's a whole new energy. Um, but I think the biggest thing to take away is the guys are excited to learn about it. You know, the guys are, you know, really buying in because, you know, we want to do something we've never done here before, and that's win a championship. And, uh, you know, Everyone's really excited, and we're excited to play on Saturday, you know, brother against brother. So, yeah, we're really excited. Levi, Craig's been pretty candid this spring about the, the accuracy and touch from you and Sean being sort of hit and miss at times. Where do you feel like your, your accuracy and just your, your throwing in general is this spring? We get everything graded um, throughout every practice. I mean, net drills, um, all that. So I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Obviously, I feel like I can do better. You know, um, there's certain things that, you know, oh, man, I just I just got lazy on this throw or my foot wasn't in the right spot. But um, as far as from last year to this year, I would say it's a huge improvement. Huge. So. How about the weapons around you, Levi? What can you say about this uh, young wide receiver core, the tight ends? We hear a lot about trading Welch. We hear a lot about Parker Christensen. How, how's that been going in the passing game? It's been great. Um, all I can say is um, everyone should be very excited for our passing game this fall. We should be very excited. 
Levi, did did confidence waver for you at all last year? I mean, there were some brutal games. I mean, games where you know you're not completing five six passes, and I know I know you were injured, but did it did it hurt your confidence level at all? Um, to be honest with you, yeah, it did. You know, um, it was it was a it was a tough mental battle. You know, um, and knowing you know what I had, I just didn't have confidence. I was like, man, I can usually make that throw like this, and I can't do that anymore. So. Um, you know, just getting used to that and then, you know, coming back um, this winter and doing this 10 week training program and into the spring, just focus back to the fundamentals, you know, back to taking profits and back to being myself, which um, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Is it tough to kind of regroup from from what kind of happened last season, just personally, just in terms of, you know, injuries, one thing, but sort of that mental battle. How, how long does it take you to kind of get back in the swing of things? Do you have to step away for a couple of weeks and just kind of decompress? How, how do you kind of go through that process? For me, it was just it was just getting back to training. You know, first I had to get healthy. You know, after Boise, I also had a hip pointer. And so I was working on my shoulder and my hip for two weeks. I didn't touch a football. And then it was just it was just getting back to training, you know, hanging out with the guys at home, training with guys at home. But, you know, great competition, you know, great thing. Josh Cobbs uh, is from my hometown. So getting to train with him and do all that and just, you know, regain that confidence and making the throws that I know I can make. Um, so, yeah. I know COVID was a reason that spring practice got pushed back. But with all those things considered, did the extra time before spring practice start? Did that help you, too? I think it did. I think it really did. Um, and I think it helps everybody. I mean, we've had the fewest injuries in the spring, this spring, and, uh, you know, we've been able to roll this spring and that's been, that's been really exciting. You know, um, are we perfect? No. Uh, were our two scrimmages perfect? No, they weren't. But, um, I think we're at a really good spot and we're going to take a big step on Saturday and we're going to just use that to propel us through the summer and into fall camp. Levi, coach mentioned that you had to change your body a little bit again after all that weight you put on last year. Yeah. What has it been like and what have you done to kind of lose that, I guess, for lack of a better word? Um, eating less. I, I used to eat like six to seven meals a day just to kind of keep up with that. So just kind of eating normally and then uh, just working out. I feel like I'm in a really good weight right now and I feel like I'm more agile and I can do more things. So um, I feel, feel really confident with, with all that. All right, you guys good? Yeah, Levi. Can I get one more? Oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Levi, you mentioned um, developing some bad habits. What what were maybe some of those bad habits that you felt like you developed? And are, are you still working through those, or do you feel like you're, you've got those corrected at this point? Um, you know, still working through it. Uh, you know, there's some days where it's like, oh, it doesn't show up at all. And then other days you're like, man, I'm really struggling with, you know, this certain thing. And, um, you know, it's just staying consistent. And then um, for me, it's going to be the summer, just, you know, getting getting perfect throw after perfect throw after perfect throw and just getting that muscle memory back um, that I lost. So, Levi, did you get out of whack at all last year, not being able to run as much? I know that that, you know, running quarterback probably wasn't a great thing with, you know, only one more quarterback on the on the roster. But that's kind of some part of your game. I mean, did that kind of hurt you at all? Um, I really don't think so. Um, I mean, sure, I like running the ball. I mean, I'm a competitor. I, I would love to, you know, impose my will on someone else, but um, I don't think so. I think um, last year, some of our biggest problem was, um, I mean, Coach probably has mentioned to you guys, is just we weren't together, you know. You know, the ace in our pocket of, you know, being together. You know, we have this great training table, and just we weren't together, and we just didn't have that togetherness that we, we usually have. So I feel like that really hurt us last season, and um, we're excited to get the training table back and, you know, get to playing our football again. Levi, real quick, uh, I, I believe, you know, when we t spoke last summer, you were about 240. What, what are you at right now? Um, I'm cruising about like 225, 230, kind of just staying in that range. So, yeah. All right. All right. Tracy, Tracy, you got something? No, I'm at 225, 230 also. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Levi. Thanks, Levi. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Levi. Thanks, Levi. No problem. Thanks, Levi. That's a 50 pound drop from when I worked. All right, guys, we got Gavin Meyer here. Cody, go ahead, start us off. Gavin, how's it going, man? 
he's on mute, I think. Uh, good. How about yourself? Good, good. So I got to ask, being a Wisconsin guy, Cole Godbout took you under his wing, right? Absolutely. Yeah, me and Cole, um, being from the same state um, and uh, getting to know him out here is a great thing, having that home connection. How much confidence did you gain playing in some games last year, you know, kind of thrown into the fire a little bit out of necessity? Um, I think confidence was uh, always um, through the team kind of aspect. Um, me, Jordan Bertinoli, um, Ramonte Holt, all those guys um, early in the season, they're like, hey, man, you're, you're in, you're, you need, just need to go. So there was no uh, question with I needed to be ready. And then um, with the aspect of like Jordan and I'm taking me under their wing and telling me, hey, man, let's just go, let's just go for it. And um, yeah, my confidence definitely never uh, faltered, but um, I think it'll just keep on building more games I get to play. Yeah, Gavin, I know there's there's some guys still working through injuries and stuff, but when, when when you look around that defensive line, do you ever just kind of step back and say this group could be pretty amazing? Absolutely. Um, this spring ball, um, having everyone back, um, obviously there's still injuries, but um, having everyone back in the room um, and in the meeting rooms, getting to talk to everybody on a daily basis, getting to build that is you can't um, replace that. And then people, like I said, Cole, Mario, Claude, Tay, all those guys getting on the field with them. Um, just the little things, little drill work, little position stuff that I get to do with them every day. Um, absolutely could be something really special. Do you ever think about how many of your guys that could have left, you know, that like the seniors that came back, does it surprise you to have, I think like, well, one senior left, one graduate, left and and uh one freshman i mean does that did that surprise you to see that many guys stay um not really i mean i think the culture that we have here just attracts people i don't think people um want to leave if they have an opportunity to keep coming back i mean if you're referencing guys like garrett crawl or like Ravante holt that um could have uh, left um i don't think they want to i think they want another piece of it man i mean having that short season really everyone wanted a little bit more um and guys like that that ended on an injury or ended on something they didn't want. Um, I think that this culture here just attracts people and wants them to keep coming back. So I wasn't surprised to see them come back. What do you think sets this culture apart from some of the others? Um, I mean, our for what I can speak for, I'm in our defensive tackle room, uh, man, every day, uh, our meetings, our practice, our mentality before practice, even just bringing that practice mentality um, every day, uh, going onto that field and saying that we're going to dominate, even though it's our 14th practice of spring ball or whatever it was with helmets only. Um, and we're still going full speed, still taking it um, every rep as as fast as you can go. Um, and that cult, like that culture, once you're in it, I feel like uh, you just want more and more. Um, and especially, I mean, Coach Caligas, uh can't really get enough of him. Um, always want more of that. Uh, and yeah. How much does it help you to uh, to build and grow when you're going up guys against guys like Keegan Kreider and Logan Harris and Erica Boje every day? Yeah, man, uh, going against those uh, offensive offensive guys every day, uh, not getting a break, uh, really does uh, give the wear and tear on you. But I think I think that's just kind of like iron sharpens iron kind of deal. Um, Having someone um, at that skill level to always go against and not taking that step down and always wanting to push yourself, especially guys like Keegan on the inside, man, just every play, it's going to come after you. You know what you're going to get. So, I mean, obviously going to make you better no matter how many times you go against. And then once you get thrown your back a couple times, you even want to get them back. So. Do you guys end up hating each other or any face mask grabbing, any fights we've missed? No, um, on the inside, uh, it's kind of like a mutual respect thing. I got you this one, but hey, man, if you got me on that play, I'm going to get you right back on the next um, play after play after play. I mean, the amount of reps that we get is amazing. I can't, like, getting in-person like reps full speed every day is going to make you better and not taking plays off, so I can't speak to that enough. Gavin, as a Wisconsin guy, how are you dealing with the Aaron Rodgers uh, drama? <laughs> Man, uh, A-Rod needs to stay home. Uh, 
I don't care what those teammates are talking about um, and all that back, backside stuff. I mean, if A-Rod can stay home for the next couple of years, it would be amazing. All right, you guys good? All right, thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Gavin. All right, guys, questions? No questions? Craig, uh, what, what did you learn most about Levi Williams last year? Oh, you know, I think maybe some of the things that he did in the bowl game, um, we might have glossed over a little bit when we really uh, got pressed on some protection issues or um, accuracy that became apparent uh, decisions. And um, I think he learned a lot and, uh, you know, he's continuing to learn. Yeah, Craig, he, he mentioned that uh, he lost a little bit of confidence during the season. Did you notice that with him? And how do you kind of work with that with, with, with a quarterback? Well, yeah, I think that there were certain, um, you know, it was hard. Uh, we, we were all dealing with a unsettled situation. Um, you know, there were some progressions, some reads that were, I think, not super complicated, but it was obvious he wasn't processing those things. And I think certainly confidence had to come into play. If there was a throw that was there and he chose not to make it, um, that was there. It wasn't something he was going to walk a razor's edge. But I, he's had a good spring, and so we're excited about him. How much do you think that injuries that we're, you know, we're just finding out now? I mean, did, did you know about them all along, or, or were they things that he started to come to you about later on in the season? You're talking about his shoulder, Tracy? Yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he – uh, I think he was – you know, he's a competitor. Um, you know, during the course of stuff, he didn't want to be complaining. Oh, well, I've got this hurt. And some, some guys, I mean, they get a loose hangnail, and they, they don't feel like they can practice. I mean, he was – trying to gut it out, but that was, yeah, but that was helpful, uh, to, at least to know. And there was a lot of days on Tuesday, he was having a hard time even moving his arm and there was some popping and cracking going on in there. Now there was nothing that, you know, the medical staff wasn't going to clear him with. There was just some pain and inflammation that he was working through, but uh, he did a good job with that. And we appreciate his competitiveness. Greg, other than the the guys that have not participated this spring because of injuries, is there going to be anybody that's going to be held out Saturday because of injuries? Uh, nobody that I'm aware of right now. Um, you know, we've been tracking where everybody's at academically. There's a couple guys that I wish they were doing better, but there's nothing that is going to uh, hold them out of the game. Um, we've had no no uh, discipline issues that's going to you know uh, allow me to bench a guy. Um, so we'll look at our rosters. Tim has the rosters, and um, we, we're in hopes that we're going to be able to play everybody some. Um, I've told all our assistant coaches that every member that's on the squad. You know, you've got a lot of local guys who have families that are within driving distance, and, you know, for them to have a chance to watch uh, their family member play for the Cowboys during spring is important. So we're going to sprinkle in. Uh, some guys, you know, certainly we want to have a competitive game, but I think it's important that everybody get a playing experience. And your your question, I gave you a long answer, is there's nobody going to be held out. Great. Right this up. is a, a little bit off topic, but I know you sit on a lot of committees, and um, you know, the NCAA is talking about limiting fall uh, camp in terms of contact practices. I was just curious what your thoughts were on that. Whole well, that's one of the committees that I sit on. <clears throat> you start out with these things. You got uh, a lot of coaching buddies out there and then you sit on this committee one year and you lose half your buddies because they're mad at you and you sit on it two years and you lose all your buddies. So I don't have a lot of friends. You know, um, everybody that sits on that group, Michael, has good intentions. I mean, there's med there's people from the medical community. There's some uh, ADs, there's uh, coaches, um, NCAA people. And, you know, we were given a charge with saying that the data um, had indicated that the, the, the amount of repetitive head contact was most prevalent during fall camp. And so we were charged with trying to, trying to decrease some of those. It wasn't so much a study on concussions. It was the, you know, the constant pounding. And so we started out and boy, it was like, you know, um, both ends of the spectrum. I mean, 
I'm not saying it's like the Democrats and the Republican in Congress, but I mean, it was a long ways away, but I got, I think we've done a hell of a lot better than those people have. Um, and so we came to a consensus that probably ain't nobody happy. I'm not happy about it. I mean, I, I think uh, uh, we need to, we we're playing football. Uh, we need to make sure we prepare our guys, but I wasn't, you know, I had my head in the sand that, it, okay, uh, what things don't you really need to do? The old pound your chest, bull on the ring, that's not teaching football. Uh, it's teaching toughness. And if we don't have toughness by now, we probably miss uh, recruited. Uh, and so uh, I think we're in a good spot. They're going to probably fine tune it. Um, I don't know if it came out today. The FOC was meeting on it today, uh, but good men that were on the committee. Um, and it was a privilege to serve, but it was, there was some grinding on it. I can tell you that. Hey, and I don't even, I don't have very many friends right now. Craig, you've mentioned on multiple occasions this spring about working on punt blocks and having a punt block in a scrimmage. Yep. When you went back and assessed things this offseason, was more impact plays on special teams? Was that something you got you thought you guys needed to improve? No, I think every every year you look at the type of team and the structure that you have. Uh, you look at um, what type of return guy you're going to have. You look at what type of guys are up front. Uh, we had been um, probably not as aggressive as what I thought we needed to be. And you know what? It's always you hold your breath when you're you're going to try to block a punt because you think, well, if we rough them, uh, then that's almost, you know, it's almost invariably it happens. The team goes down and scores. And to do that, though, um, Davis, you have to work on it. So we worked on it quite a bit. Uh, I think we've got mixed results. Uh, there's some guys that can come in and, and they're scot-free and they turn their head like that and, you know, they short arm it. They got alligator arms and that isn't going to change. That's in their DNA. And then you have some other guys that really have a, a ability to get off uh, slink and, and put their hand on the ball. And we have a couple of those guys, not as many as what I'd like, but I do think we need to be more aggressive and go after some more pump blocks this year. Coach, what are your thoughts on the progression of Gavin Meyer? He really kind of got thrown in the fire last year and did a did a pretty darn good job. Yeah, you know what? We're we're well pleased with him. He's put on some lean muscle mass, and that's helped uh, this spring. Um, we felt like he was a good player out of high school. You know, we felt like he was going to be a developmental guy, which he was, and he's developed. Uh, he's certainly not the finished product uh, right now, but he's gotten better. And he's proven that we can put him in and get some a bona fide playing time. Hey, Craig, another hot button topic off the field has been the, the name image likeness legislation that some states uh -huh. have already adopted. Um, Wyoming has not adopted that. But just in terms of recruiting, do you worry about that being a disadvantage? And would you like to see Wyoming adopt NIL legislation? You know, I'm going to I'm going to stay neutral as far as. Um, um, that whole topic as far as whether I would want Wyoming to vote on it or not, um, that's up to our state leaders. Uh, I do get concerned that um, whenever you make a, a, a movement like this, um, you really start to look and say, okay, what is amateur ath athletics? What are we really trying to accomplish? And I, and I know the, uh, the storyline, look how many – millions of dollars everybody's making and you have head coaches that are making seven million dollars and they leave and they transfer someplace else and yet the players are there and players aren't getting anything i i, I do think this uh, we made an adjustment several years ago with the cost of attendance scholarship we recognized that you know what some of these student athletes uh you know could because the scholarship hadn't changed in I think like 15, 20 years. And so we made a, a marked decision to, to increase the cost of attendance scholarship. Um, and, and that, I mean, there was a lot more money there than what people realize. Um, the complicating factor is, is okay, just because your um, starting running back may be a celebrity, is he really that more valued than the offensive lineman that's blocking for him because he isn't getting that in the NIL money. And then you, I, I'm uncomfortable with it. Uh, the horse was out of the barn. Uh, 
you know, I, I mentioned to a lot of people, you combine that with a one-time transfer. I said, I was in the Southwest Conference. Tracy's probably the only guy on this call that knows who the hell the Southwest Conference was. But uh, it was, I told them all, I said, it's like a bad movie. It's Groundhog Day. I said, you're going down a path. And I get, we got all these things. But uh, the words I just got were, you know what, we're going to do it, coach, and just kind of let the dust settle where they fall. And so, um what Wyoming does, I don't know. We're trying to – hell, Davis, we're just trying to get a first down right now. Can you give me a break? You guys got any more yes, hard questions, you know. I'm, hey, I'm, hey it's, it's, it's coming whether you're – I know. I'm jerking your chain. I'm very well – believe me, I know it's coming, <laughs> Davis. Hey, um, hey, Craig, where's the, the competition between uh, Easton and Chuck Hicks going into the, the spring game? Uh, pretty tight. I think Chuck's got a little bit of an advantage on him. Um, but Easton has closed the gap, and uh, those two guys will see significant playing time. And so whoever's declared the starter is really going to be, I don't want to say a moot point, because those guys are going to play a lot. And uh, the competition has been good for both of them. They both have strength and weaknesses. And um, Chuck may have a little bit more experience, uh, but Easton does some really good things. Craig, Jay said a couple of weeks ago that um, Rome Weber's, you know, it's, it's hard to take 15 months off and come back and, and be where you were. Uh, I don't think we've heard about Solomon Bird at all this spring. How is he looking and is he back to his normal self? He's playing okay, you know. You'll see a depth chart uh, that comes out um, unless something changes. He's probably not going to be at the top of the depth chart. Um, and we evaluate every, every every single thing. And so a football is a developmental sport. And um, how you move and your weightlifting and your conditioning all come into play. Craig, is there an amount of, I don't want to say frustration, but is it is it sometimes frustrating to have these guys who, who did opt out maybe not hit the ground running like you would have wanted to? I wouldn't say frustration. You know, I had some concerns about that. Uh, but what we chose to do, Michael, was, um, and I thought our football team really did a great job. We came and we meshed, you know, maybe the first week or two, some of the guys were in the weight room saying, okay, this guy wasn't here. But, you know, we put all that in the past. And, uh, you know, guys made decisions for their personal reasons, which we, which we respected. Um, we did say it was going to be competitive this spring. And we were going to go out and evaluate and play the best guys that we feel like are the best guys. And so the cream's risen to the top. I think you'll get a depth chart sometime after spring football. And uh, you guys can dissect it. Doesn't mean that anything is etched in stone. But as coaches, we make evaluations. Uh, I think we make more right evaluations and wrong evaluations, and you'll see that. No other questions. Well, Coach, you've talked a lot about Devon Harris. Is is he maybe one of those guys that's risen to the top of the depth chart? Well, you're pretty astute there. Um, that's why we're going to put out the depth chart, keep you guys in suspense. Y'all are laughing a hell of a lot today. I just came off long practice, and Davis is asking me hard questions. S softballs, Davis, softballs. It's what we're looking for here, you know. I, I, was, practice. I was practice today, Coach. Thank it was you. average, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> you, look, you look frustrated when you walked in. Yes, yeah, I was a little average. Tracy, do you have a question there, my friend? Well, I just wonder, I mean, I asked a couple of players, but for yourself, to see so many guys come back when you see other schools losing guys out, what does that make you feel about the job you guys must be doing with these kids that they want to stay instead of get yeah. out of here? Well, I appreciate you asking that. And every year's uh, different, and so I, I don't know what the future is going to hold. But I, I do think we have a culture here of – the guys that we recruited, Tracy, we were very transparent with them and very authentic when we recruited them. When we sat in their home, we said, this is, there's not going to be anything given to you. Uh, you're going to be given an opportunity to get a great degree from a, a, a national land grant research institution. Uh, you're going to be given the resources to be at your very best. 
Uh, we're going to be consistent with you and treat you fairly. And I feel like our players recognize that um, we have a good program. Uh, while it's not been easy and not, not every day is a Chamber of Commerce day, but they are getting better. Our facilities are top notch. I mean, top notch. Uh, the nutrition they get is excellent. The strength and development is excellent. And that's one of the reasons why I think you've seen so many guys rise up this last year in the NFL. And so they feel like they can accomplish all their goals. And so sometimes the further away, the better it looks and it's a lie. And we feel like our guys are bought in right now. Uh, to be uh, Wyoming Cowboys. And uh, we hope that stays that way. Uh, but I, I do think honesty and being very consistent and and they I think they see that they can accomplish everything we they want to accomplish. We play in a great league. We have super fans. We've got great facilities. We got phenomenal weather here. Not really. Um, but they get what they, you know, maybe some of them are going to leave because of the snow. But I always worry. I mean, hell, if a guy's going to leave because he's worried about the snow, he's not going to be a very good football player. But I think we give them what we told them we were given. And that's why they're bought in, Tracy. Well, what about having two quarterbacks that seem to be as talented as the guys you have, and they seem to be fairly much supportive of each other? I mean, that couldn't that be a difficult situation in some places? I think a lot of it comes down to the character of the guys that are in that room. Um, if you have uh, ego driven guys that think the world revolves around them and that they're the best thing since post toasties and they don't want to take coaching. And if they're not the starter, they're going to take their ball and go home. Um, that's what you're seeing in college football. And I, I think you're probably seeing it more in basketball than you are in football. Uh, but uh, those things make me want to throw up. I mean, that, that goes against everything that you're trying to teach in college football, you know, to be a team player, to overcome adversity, you know, uh, when you're, when your number's called, be prepared, ready to go and support your team. And uh, I don't want to sound like I'm on a soapbox, but I just think we're in an instant gratification society. And, uh, uh, you know, here's a case in point, that quarterback position. You got these guys that play quarterback and they have family members that have shopped them all around, they've taken them to every guru, and they've done all these seven on seven leagues, and they've got all these star ratings. And if they can't start, they're going to go someplace else. And we got two guys here that, you know what, they're grinders, they were multi sport guys, their families are behind them, and they're bought in for the Wyoming Cowboys. And that's why I love coaching here, Tracy. We like having you here. Uh, thanks for saying that. Davis is rubbing his eyes saying, I call BS on that, but <laughs> I'm picking on you today, Davis. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I'm used to it. Um, yeah. I do. I do uh, Craig, what, what do you want to see out of the scrimmage that would make you feel good about where you guys are going into the yeah. summer? Um, I'm going to correct you here because it's going to be a game. I know you said scrimmage, but I want to see, and the reason why I'm saying that is, for players to go out there and be in an environment that's a game-like situation, uh, where there's fans in the stands, officials, they, they're they calling it just like a regular game. We have execution with play clock um, and see a clean football game. And, and then uh, to see our guys go out and enjoy playing. They've worked hard this spring, and you play the game because it's not work you play. And so to have – to have our players in, in be enthusiastic and then competent play. Um, there's always a star in the spring game. It's always somebody sometimes that nobody may know about. And a lot of times that star in the spring game is the same guy that starts a star uh, in the fall. And so usually somebody's going to rise from there. I have the best seat in the house. Uh, I'm going to usually set up in the press box and um, the coaches each have their one trick play that they can call. And so there's some gamemanship here, and it's going to be a game, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, anything else? Some good questions here. You guys, I, I they're going to be able to attend the game or not? So they're going to be able to attend the game, and uh, hopefully you can be there. I know we're going to have fans there. I, I, everything I've been told is we're going to have good attendance. Hopefully we get some good weather. Anything else? 
Davis, I know you're a big guy. You can take it. I'm joking with you. I think we all know that. All right, peace. I'm out. I'll see you guys on Saturday. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.